also be your friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's got also a lot of one episode appearances, but she's been in the new Quantum Leap, which I haven't seen. Have you seen the new Quantum Leap? I liked that original one. But. There was a there is a new Quantum Leap. Oh yeah, hmm. oh yeah. Okay. It's in its second season, I believe. Really? Yeah. Okay. God, we gotta like. <laughs> I remember <laughs> pitching that bit a few a few maybe it was last year or something like that. Uh, we were talking about oh. Uh, doing something possibly like oh this has been remade or something like that you know like a, a oh identifying what's like been that. remade or what yeah, hasn't. yeah. Just like a, yeah <laughs> i think at this uh. point trying to find the stuff that hasn't been remade is gonna be really <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> even uh, you know it's funny i was reading an article this was this was years and years and years ago it was you know what it was it was when that bewitched movie came out with nicole kidman oh, nicole kidman yeah yeah mm -hmm. and it bombed at the box office it did terribly but um but they the article was talking about how it won't scare studios away from reusing old ip because oh, yeah. the marketing budget drops so much when you're using a recognizable <laughs> name you yes. don't have to you know you don't have to market the film as much so you've you know you you're taking the most expensive part of making a movie and you're cutting that budget by two thirds or something because yeah. people have name recognition of bewitched. I mean, they made a whole, they made a whole movie about it with the yeah. distinguished gentleman. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's the whole thing is like even the bad stuff, even stuff that wasn't successful. Like I'm surprised we haven't seen like a, a, my mother, the car <laughs> like movie or something like that, you know, widely accepted to be one of the worst TV shows of all time. But, you know, uh, something that they would bring back because people know the name and so people will go see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember what was it? The Fugitive was a yes. TV show and then it, they, yes. and I'd probably do for another remake actually. Well, I think they Fugitive. did remake. I mean, they remade oh, they it. They remade it like 10 years ago or something, didn't they? The, the, uh, the Harrison Ford Fugitive? The, or the, the TV show. The, oh, yeah. Oh. No, it was. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> they did a mini series in 2020. Guess who starred in it? <laughs> I give up who? Boyd Holbrook. What? Yes. Are you serious? I am dead serious. Boyd Holbrook plays Mike Farrow, who is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. The Fugitive. Kiefer Sutherland also in that in that uh, mini series. Oh yeah, there is one here. Oh geez. Okay. Well, so there was a one. And then there was also. one from 2000 that didn't last very long that had Tim Daly and McKelty Williamson. <laughs> and it's <laughs> an yet another connection to justify it. God, there's so many. I didn't even know that one. I might have to go check that out. Actually. The, the remake. Oh, the remake, the Boyd Holbrook one. Yeah, miniseries? yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, I think it revolves yeah. around like a terrorist uh, plot or something. Oh, something. yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, The Fugitive now has been remade. The Fugitive TV show now has been remade twice. If you don't count the movie, <laughs> 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 which would be a third. <clears throat> so, yeah. So again, cool. hard to find stuff that hasn't been remade. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's Ashley Delaney. Quantum Leap, the new Quantum Leap, NCIS, 911 Lone Star. She had a three episode arc on Days of Our Lives. She was in Bones and Workaholics, which is a show I love. Um, so yeah, lots of one episode appearances, not really known for a whole lot else besides that. And very, very mm. cute. I mean, she does a really, I think she does a very good job playing a convincing sex worker in this episode. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, she's got the the natural sort of empathy <laughs> that I think yes. someone would have to have in that situation, right? Like she can, yeah, she's yeah. making an emotional or, or a more than physical connection with her, with her clientele. And that's why they keep calling yeah. her back. Yeah. Yeah. She knows how to get that repeat business. Yeah, you, that's what you want, the repeat, the regular clients. Yeah, savvy, <laughs> savvy business person. Yeah, and very similar to that, uh, the one in, the girl in uh, this what, that last season of Justified uh, in, uh, hmm. uh, what's yeah, yeah. her name? Uh, Dewey Crow's, uh, Dewey Crow's friend. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 oh. I'm talking about the, the uh, in City Primeval, what's her name, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, yeah, well, Sandy's yeah. not really a, a hooker or a prostitute. Aren't they all? No, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I guess she kind of, well, yeah, 
I don't know if she turns tricks necessarily, but she does use sexual encounters to scam men. So yeah, uh, yeah. let's not split it's... hairs here. I suppose <laughs> a distinction without a difference. <laughs> Well, that gets us through our episode basics in uh, in record record uh, length time, I think. <laughs> Despite but, all the all my uh, digressions, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that means we got to take a trip back to the week of February twenty fourth, two thousand fifteen, and see what was happening in popular culture at the time. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a yeah, and we um, we're looking at our number one movie, our number one top forty song, and uh, our number one top forty song is the same. Week number seven, Uptown <laughs> Funk stays in charge. Uh, and again, I haven't peeked ahead, but I suspect, based on what I remember about Uptown Funk, it will be uh, number one when we finish this uh, series as well. <laughs> Uh, number one movie, 50 shades of gray again, although huge drop off this week, they went from, uh, opening weekend last weekend, 107 million. They made 29 million this week. (laughs) Uh, yeah, not great in a seven day week as opposed to a three day week. So, uh, Hmm. not real good. I mean, it's still, that's what still 30 million. Still, right? still thirty million dollars, yeah. But uh, I mean, that's a that's a seventy five percent drop off from geez. week one. That's not good. Also, yeah, I premiering. haven't seen any of this. I haven't seen any of those movies. Oh, I haven't either. I haven't uh, either. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's some fabulous nudity in those movies, but you know, I think you have to sit through like two hours of <laughs> Just other like... stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we talked about that in the idol and how that had plenty of duty. Oh yeah. Also. Yeah. And so, yeah. And also uh, terrible. Right. Like, like, yeah. uh, again, we'll be remembered as one of the worst TV shows ever made. I think <laughs> fabulously terrible used on every list of like bad TV. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, th- also premiering this week in theaters, the Duff, uh, designated ugly fat friend is what that stands for. <laughs> I saw that movie. That's got Emma Stone in it, I think. I I saw that too. Yeah. Let's see here. It came out. Yeah, I saw that movie. Yeah. It, it was, was okay. Solid, I didn't I see it at the theater. Yeah. I saw it at I saw it at home. Um, yeah, I yeah, I yeah it, it was okay. It was fine. It was funny. Yeah. yeah. I, I enjoyed it. And then Bella uh, Thorne, that's who it is. Oh, Bella Thorne, yeah. isn't it? Bella okay. Thorne, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And then uh Hot Tub Time Machine 2 is uh, also <laughs> premiered this week. And uh, I did see that movie in the theater. So I was probably one of the people who contributed to the $8 million it raked in its opening weekend, which I think under any metric is a failure. So, <laughs> Well, it's the movie cost. I don't know how much the movie cost to make. but Definitely you know. more than $8 million. <laughs> <laughs> that, and it was the, the, the John second Cusack one. John Cusack even... and Rob Corddry and... Uh, uh, what's his name from uh, from The Office? Oh, uh, Daryl. Daryl from The Office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's no, hot, but it was that's, eight more than eight million dollars. <laughs> that's a uh, that's the sequel too. So. Yes, <laughs> it wasn't the original one. It wasn't, and they and usually the actors make more for the sequel. So that's the uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just paying your actors alone costs more than eight million. I promise. Fourteen percent on RT on that's Rotten right. Tomatoes. <laughs> How, 15% is that what you said? Uh, 14, 14%, 14% on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it was that terrible. I enjoyed it. Mm, I don't I don't think I saw it. I don't oh, think yeah. I saw the first one. Is oh, that, okay. Like, you know, like the 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 concept is something I totally go for. Yeah. Like the, you know, just based on the title. But I, I just haven't seen it. Well, I mean, it, it's it's a time travel movie, but it essentially is a period piece uh because mm. it's it takes place in the 80s there's a great storyline in the first one the original one there's a great storyline that involves uh the drive because it's happening when that's happening and so uh-huh. that brings back terrible memories <laughs> for me for you <laughs> i'm oh, tr- so cl- traumatized long <laughs> long suffering brown fans, huh? <laughs> I remember crying after that game. <laughs> that was, I, I remember just going nuts. Actually, that's funny because I remember going uh, Elway's like just he was just like just drove him down the field. I know. Just, well, oh, it's fantastic. Yards. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it, it, objectively amazing, but you know, subjectively, 
terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. But that's like par for the course for oh, yeah. Cleveland franchises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Without getting, because this is not a football podcast, this is a justified <laughs> podcast. So without getting into too much detail, the Browns have won the last two weeks. Uh, they should not have won either one of those games. They've gotten some significant assistance from the refs. And all they're doing is just setting up Browns fans to be disappointed when they actually <laughs> don't get assistance from the refs and have to play a tough game. So it's going to really suck. <laughs> you're just preparing yourself yeah no look even when you win you don't really win if you're a browns fan <laughs> it's just the way it works well hope springs eternal that's right yeah i won't be convinced until they actually win a super bowl well <laughs> yeah i don't even know man I, yeah. like i stopped following football no. but are they close or no like team wise no, or is it just I would no? say, I mean, yeah. I would say, I would say sort of, um, uh -huh. they've got some really good talent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They've also got Deshaun Watson at quarterback, but he's hurt ish. Uh -huh. he, he doesn't seem to want to play very much is the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> he got his, he got his $250 million. Now he's kind of like, I'm not sure I'm all for this football thing. When I had those two years off because I assaulted those uh, massage therapists, <laughs> That felt pretty Jeez. good. I was getting a paycheck and not having to work. I think I want to kind of want to keep doing that. <laughs> Jeez. That's the vibe I'm getting. So not great. Yeah. Well, of course, because uh, the Browns will never be a find it, either no. find or keep a quarterback. No, not, <laughs> a, not a, not a tier a quarterback. No way. We yeah. got to piece it together with spare parts. So uh, speaking of piecing together with spare parts, uh, our organized crime story this week, lesser known organized crime. I'm going to talk about the mafia, but I'm not going to talk about the American mafia. I'm going to talk about the Sicilian mafia operating in America. It's a weird sort of thing. So uh, basically in the 1960s, these uh, Sicilian mafia guys start showing up in New York. Um, some of them have gotten kicked out of of Italy by the rest of the Sicilian mafia because they don't like them for one reason or another but you know we welcome the the poor tired huddled masses yearning to breathe breathe free here so they end up in New York they're affiliates of the organized crime families in New York, but they're not actual members of the organized crime families. And they're called Zips, which is a, uh, 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 a slur used to refer to uh, Italian immigrants, uh, primarily because of the way that they speak. So they speak in a very kind of staccato, rapid, rapid fire sort of uh, Italian uh, with that Sicilian dialect. And so that's why they call them the Zips, because they talk so fast. <clears throat> um, but anyway... I digress. So, so you have all these uh, all these Sicilian mafia guys that show up in New York, and there's a guy named Carmine Galanti who works for the Bonaro crime family, and he's attempting to use the Zips to control the entire heroin trade. He's in charge of heroin distribution and 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 the drug trade for the Bonanno crime family, but he's trying to use his connection to the Zips to sort of monopolize and control the entire heroin trade in the U.S. Well, the rest of the Bonanno crime family doesn't really care for that, so they take him out. Hmm. When they take him out, uh, the Sicilians in Italy take over the, the trade, right? They're, again, loosely affiliated with the, the crime families in New York, but ultimately they're running the show in Italy. And so what happens is this morphine paste from Turkey, and the reason I picked this one this week, we'll talk about in a second, but this morphine paste comes in from Turkey, goes to Palermo in Italy. In, in Palermo, it's converted into heroin, and then it's, it's put into uh, San Marzano tomato cans, Mm. which are then shipped mm -hmm. to pizza parlors yeah. throughout the U S and the Midwest, especially. And yeah. so they called this the pizza connection. <clears throat> and so basically you have these Sicilian guys who are working at these pizza parlors that are helping with this heroin distribution over eight years, about 60 million in cash gets smuggled out of the country, transferred to Switzerland, Italy, Turkey, the FBI gets, gets wind of this thing and they start paying very close attention to it. Uh, in 1985, you have a trial, 22 defendants, 55,000 wiretaps, 300 witnesses. The trial lasts 17 months and they get 18 convictions. The bosses get 45 years each. 
Wow. Now, the reason I brought this up is because I'm currently listening to Blowback Season 4. If you haven't... 